Hi everyone and welcome. Have you ever noticed that there's a bit of a stigma surrounding pet portraits in certain parts of the art world? Is this opinion justified? Are pet portraits real art? What a topic to tackle, but that's what I'm going to do in this video. I hope that you'll give it a watch and if you like it then do leave me a thumbs up. Also please do subscribe for more videos and I'd love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Hope you enjoy this. I want to take us right back to the beginning and discover where our obsession for putting animals in art began. Is this a new thing? Or have we always been obsessed with animals and in particular companion animals in art? Well, when you consider that the very earliest images in the form of cave paintings are usually of animals, I think we can say that it's not a new idea. If you look back through some of the most ancient art, you'll find that previous civilizations were worshipping and celebrating very similar creatures to us. Let's face it, we've been human slaves to the domestic cat for hundreds if not thousands of years. And once you start to look back through Renaissance paintings, you realise there are as many paintings with pets included as there are without. I literally find it difficult to choose my favourites for this video because there are so many. So where did the commissioned portrait artist begin? In the Renaissance, it's mostly the royal families, the church and rich merchants who could afford to commission art. Portraits were often commissioned to boost one's ego or show how beautiful your wife was. But even in this early life of the commissioned artist, pets were often included. Our love for companion animals dates back further than you would think. In fact, many dog breeds can be traced back to their origins through art. I mean, isn't that a Cairn Terrier in the Arnold Finney portrait? Well, those scruffy little guys haven't changed much. Just look how many times the pets were included and even took centre stage in these older portraits. And you can always tell that the artist put just as much effort into capturing the animal as the humans. In fact, one of my favourite Norman Rockwell quotes Paint four-legged creatures just as carefully and understandingly as you would paint the people. And German expressionist artist Franz Marc often talked about his love of painting animals because in his words they were the only innocent creatures in a corrupted world. Well now that rings true with me and if you're an animal lover too I bet you can see where he's coming from. I think you'll notice that most artists throughout their career gravitate back to the subject matters that inspire them the most. We've got Van Gogh and his self-portrait, Monet and his water lilies. Fast forward a few years and we're still at it. Lucien Freud and his famous hounds, Picasso and his sausage dog, Lump. What a brilliant name. David Hockney and his sausage dogs, which are some of my favourite paintings of his. Not just because I'm an avid dachshund fancier, but I can see the intense love that Hockney had for his dogs in these paintings. If you don't see the value or the emotional content that animals often bring to art, then aren't you missing the point? It's not just some cheap trick or a bit of kitsch to play on. Many of us relate to this art because we understand and can relate to the relationships in the paintings. Shouldn't good art evoke emotion? So fast forward again to current day when many artists like myself earn a living from painting pet portraits. Aren't we lucky to live in an age when the average person can afford to commission art? It's not just the royal families or the rich merchants anymore. Art is still a luxury commodity, but for most people it's attainable. And what are they choosing to have painted? Well, for a lot of people it's their family members, people that they love. 
But nowadays, we include our pets in our family. And I think mainly due to the shorter lifespan that our pets have, it's one of the main reasons why we want a memorial to remember them by. Their short lives make them only with us for a short time and often we want something to remember that little creature who brought us so much joy and comfort. Thank goodness I live in an age where this is so popular, where the thing that actually inspired me to start painting has a healthy market. But you're always going to find people who don't like what you're doing. I've experienced a bit of judgment from what I call art snobbery. And there are always people who have a special category in their heads for those of us who like to paint animal art. But animals have always had a huge role to play in my life. And at a very young age, when I was in school getting teased for being in the local newspaper because of my involvement with some animal charities, I learned very quickly that these people's opinions, it's just that, it's just their opinion. Why should I change? I paint what I love and people want to buy it. To me, that is a recipe for a successful artist. Sure, some galleries have judged me and not wanted my work, but that only means that it wasn't the right gallery for me. One of my most popular series that I've sold through the Eakin Gallery in Belfast, who I've dealt with for years, is of my own girl, Brocky. Perhaps inspired by some of those early Renaissance paintings, I love to create a whole scene to convey more of the story that I want to show with my animal art. And seriously, what is it with eccentric artists and sausage dogs, eh? If it's good enough for David Hockney and Picasso, it's good enough for me. But just recently, when I was watching an older episode of one of my favourite programmes, Sky Portrait Artist of the Year, I wasn't that surprised to hear one of the judges speak negatively about putting dogs in art. One of the entrants had included their dog with them in their portrait, and this judge made a huge point of saying how much they don't normally like that stuff. Well, the same judge has also made quite negative comments about my favourite medium, soft pastel. So I hope that he never sees any of my work because it might actually upset him. Is there any more validity in painting a vase of flowers or a landscape or a plain wall with a shadow on it? My main point is that there is no right or wrong. You paint whatever you want and even if someone who seems really qualified in something important tells you otherwise, the pet portrait is here to stay. There's enough art world out there for everyone. So do what you enjoy, do it unapologetically, and if you're lucky, others will enjoy it too. Don't try to please everyone, you'll never do it. Just be honest and sincere in your work as that, I believe, is what makes a good artist. I really hope that you find this helpful, liberating, interesting, or infuriating if you don't like pet portraits. But I'd love to hear some of your feedback in the comments below. And if you don't like pet portraits, go on, I dare you. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy pastling.